today I'm showing you how to make your own sunscreen and then I'll go over some sunscreen myths, do's and don'ts. We already poured it before I got it. <laughs> I pour it back before. in? I mean, no. <laughs> you want me to? Yeah. I'm going to do this. Okay. I'm going to lower that on flame as well because it's supposed to be a simmer. Okay. It's on the lowest. Just the water does not touch the glass whenever you do. Um, 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 a double boiler, a double boil. Okay. So you want to make sure that the water stays low enough so that it doesn't touch the glass. Is this supposed to make it like extra hot or what is the point of double boiling? It's just boiling? so that you can um, liquefy or you know um, whatever it is you want to liquefy. Okay, there we go. Ready? Yeah. Okay. One, two, three, five, six, seven. It actually blends in nicely. Not tacky. film or anything on there. Lovely. Put your hand model on. I know. Did you see what I watch all the time? It looks um, like more emollient now. You know, I, I think it is. You haven't touched it yet? Uh-uh. So sunscreen is a very hot button topic. When I searched it this morning, there was already hundreds of articles that came up within even a few hours. A lot of them are telling you, you need to put on more, we're not wearing enough, 14 things you should know about sunscreen, decoding sunscreen labels. A San Antonio mother claims sunscreen burned her daughter. They want to instill a lot of fear into you and um, how all the ways that you could be using sunscreen wrong and what you need to do better. Uh, now pets need sunscreen to protect their sensitive parts and this one cracked me up. Do you need to wear sunscreen indoors? <laughs> the best sunscreen for cyclists. It talks about expiration dates which I'm sure is valid and makes sense. Um, but this last one really stuck out to me especially with the topic of this video. Dermatologists weigh in on the dangers of homemade sunscreen. So let's talk about this for a second. The sunscreen that I made has an SPF of about 35, which protects against 98% of the sun's UVB rays. UVB rays are what causes sunburn. The raspberry seed oil protects against UVA rays, which cause aging and skin cancer. Higher SPFs only offer a fraction of additional sun protection and often have twice the carcinogenic chemicals included as a bonus. There are two types of sunscreen, chemical and mineral. The ones pictured here are chemical sunscreens and should be avoided. The one that I made was a mineral sunscreen and is non-toxic and completely safe. So since um, all these articles are out telling you all the different ways that you're using sunscreen wrong and you need to wear more and even wear it indoors, let's look and see um, what sunscreen options are available out there. So this is on Sephora and the top most rated. Um, it's Murad City Skin Age Defense Broad Spectrum SPF 50. Uh, it's pretty expensive, $65 for just under two ounces. Um, but it seems to be pretty popular and 1900 people uh, recommend it. And it says it's a revolutionary ultralight 100% mineral sunscreen 
Mm. With environmental protection technology to shield skin from key causes of damage that accelerate visible signs of aging. Solutions for uneven skin, fine line wrinkles, uneven texture. Uh, what about sun protection? Uh, let's see what else it says. Features environmental protection technology or protects skin from five main causes of skin damage, UVA, UVB, pollution, blue light from devices, infrared radiation. And it's made without sulfates, parabens, and phylates. Uh, so the secret's out about those. So a lot of companies really pat themselves on the back for not including sulfates and parabens. It does have some mineral sunscreen elements, the titanium dioxide and zinc oxide. But it has some urea in it. And urea, I, I, I'm really clueless on why they would need to include that. Uh, it's basically urine. And I can think of one person who'd be excited about that, but I, I doubt that you are. <laughs> It also has taurine in it, and taurine is a organic compound widely distributed in animal tissues, and it's a major constituent of bile. Um, it's also found in this popular energy drink. Another scary thing about the ingredients list here is it has a lot of cones, dimethicone, uh, a couple of dimethicones, and cones are drying. They do not absorb, and they actually create a plastic-like barrier on your skin. This prevents you from sweating and traps bacteria under your skin. The last thing I want to point out is butylene glycol, uh, another sketchy ingredient. So it's a petroleum byproduct, petroleum like what you put in your car. It's also used to make construction materials from polyester plastics, such as sheets and boards and molding materials for boats. So you want to put that on your skin <laughs> or no? Nah. So let's take a look at Ulta another really popular uh, cosmetics shop and their best-selling sunscreens. I wanted to point out La Roche Posay. I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that correct, but at least with this one, you get uh, a bigger amount and it's a little cheaper, but um, we're going to find out that the ingredients aren't what they seem. So it says it's formulated with cell ox shielding technology, whatever the heck that is. Um, so let's look at what's really in it and look past the marketing. It has oxybenzone in it, which is something that you really want to avoid. Um, that actually can cause skin cancer. It has some cones in it and then stearate, uh, which I found interesting. It's a fatty acid usually found in pork, butter, chicken, fish, and milk. Not sure why they'd want to put that in sunscreen and I'm not sure why you'd want to put that on your skin. So if you're vegan, make sure to look out for ingredients like this. But the scariest thing in their ingredients list was propylene glycol. Propylene glycol is a preservative. It's used to prolong the shelf life of many products, especially on skincare aisles. It's the most common ingredient in personal care items, exceeding over 4,000 products. There's $135 billion in revenue made by the personal care products industry, and that depends on the ability to preserve their products. It congeals ingredients like oil and water and acts as a conditioning agent. So it's used in antifreeze, acetone, chloroform, and heavy duty degreasing agents. It is said to be so powerful that it can dissolve through a stainless steel tank in two days and must be stored in heavy duty containers. Workers must wear gloves, goggles, and protective gear when handling this. So I don't, why the heck would you want to put that on your skin beats me. All they care about you knowing is that it has cell ox shield technology, uh, which is, it's just a marketing ploy. Make it sound fancy, make it sound like it's something that you need, but you definitely don't need propylene glycol on your skin. I wanted to highlight some good examples of chemical sunscreens to avoid. I do go into more detail on sunscreen and myths and do's and don'ts on my blog, which is http vegan with two vs.com. So you can read more there. I'll have that info in the description. Thanks so much for watching and uh, protect yourself the right way against the sun.